Awesome. Hey, guys, uh, this is Carlos Phoenix uh, with the Lounge Network.com. And today I have a special guest, my friend, and um, an artist, designer, illustrator, uh, Hugo Bravo. And we're here at his place uh, where he does all the different types of work that he does uh, from illustration to graphic design. And uh, today we're going to talk not only about him as an artist, but also him as a person who's putting together and having other artists join together. And uh, we're going to be announcing a special product today. So um, let me introduce you to Hugo. Are you ready, Hugo? I am. All right, man. So uh, here you are. This is Hugo Bravo. And hey, what's up, everybody? So um, Hugo is with uh, VisionIllustrated.com. Is that right? Or did I have that wrong? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the name of the, of the website. special project we'll be talking about today. Cool deal. And um, today, Hugo, uh, we're going to first start with... You know, uh, you as an artist, um, like I normally do, I like to introduce people to not only who you are, but also um, what you're about. And so I'm going to switch these microphones off. So again, with the technical difficulties, we've had a few issues today, but we'll overcome them. All right. So I've known Hugo since college days, and um, we went to art school together. Just to give you a little bit of background as to how I know him. And uh, we both uh, learned art together and went to FIT in, in New York. Um, but what I want to do is get a little bit more be uh, further behind in your life history. So first of all, where, where are you from? Like, what's your background? Well, uh, native-born Colombian. And uh, my parents came up here when we were all very little. I'm one of four siblings, and I'm the eldest. And we have a sister. She's the youngest. I have two brothers in between us. Um, and it's been here since like the 70s. So pretty much grew up more American than Colombian. And everything I've done, schooling, work, everything has been here. Now, um, you're not the only artist in the family, right? That is correct. I have two other brothers, as I mentioned, who uh, also are painters in their own right. Um, I lean more towards the sci-fi fantasy. My middle brother is more into like uh, sexual innuendos and strong in uh, portraiture and things like that. And then my younger brother is more into um, social and political um, statements via fine artwork. He's strong with the figure, just like the rest of us. So you won't find like painted vases and landscapes in our portfolios, but definitely a lot of figurative work. That's cool. Now you got into, um, what were your influences in terms of sci-fi fantasy? Like why did you choose that? Because obviously your brothers went in different directions. So what made you change uh, that direction or what go made you go into that direction? I think mostly it's the same story as a lot of the artists in this field. You know, as, as, a, as a young kid, you get exposed to, the one and only Frank Frazetta and other major contenders in the field, such as Boris and Hildebrandt Brothers, etc. And I was drawn towards that realism and the human figure always being the focus of these like dynamic scenarios. So I found myself gravitated towards that. And with my sketchbooks and my uh, inspirations as well as museum visits I always went towards the work that included the figure in a, in a sort of like a fantasy idealistic type of um, you know um, interpretation now all right so you you're natively born in Colombia and at some point obviously your family decided to move to the United States um, what what kind of artistic influences do you feel you got let's say from Colombia and what kind of what what made you kind of uh, what things occurred in your life that made you kind of draw into the sci-fi? So in, in other words, I know when, let's say, Boris was in his country, he used to do advertising and that type of thing, came to the United States, dealt with advertising, and then somehow uh, turned into a sci-fi illustrator. So were there any influences? Uh, you mentioned Boris, you mentioned Frazetta, but outside of that, in terms of, I know there's artists in Colombia that are very influential, was there anything on that side that when you were a kid, you said, you know what, I, I want to be an artist from there? Or did it all happen here in the U.S.? Um, pretty much it all happened here. We came 
at a very, very young age. I mean, I remember going to, you know, first grade here in the U.S. So prior to that, you're just crayons and pencils and doing whatever comes out naturally. But the true art inspiration came now being here in the United States. Now, when you came to the U.S., did you start off like I did when I was a kid? I was doing with coloring books. Uh, was there anything in particular that you started doing, or was you just outright just drawing or collecting comics or that type of thing? Like uh, Usually you hear kids uh, tracing or copying comics when they're young. Uh, for me, it was coloring books. What about you? For me, it was definitely the comics. I remember I mean, the old classic Marvels, Captain America, Daredevil, and definitely the tracing, you know, um, pretty much trying to interpret the line work of those artists and those figures. But I discovered comics before I discovered sci-fi fantasy. So at that young age, it was definitely the comic books. Now, are there, were there any TV shows that also influenced you, or was it mostly just comic books? Well, you know, TV as a kid is always part of your routine, so... I definitely say a lot of the Saturday morning cartoons, you know, the Super Friends, and so. Well, hold on. Let me let me ask you why. Like, so here we are in this setting, and you'll notice everywhere around me, and any, everywhere around Hugo, um, are are these collections of of figures. So, uh, and most of them are from films or video games and that type of stuff. So, so that's where the question comes from, because clearly there's also that movie influence coming in from somewhere. You really get into these figures, which is fantastic. I, I wish I had a collection like this myself. So, so is there a crisscross there? Well, um, I would say yes, because by collecting what inspires me, it's like I'll have that constant inspiration around me if it's from a film, a particular character, or, or an alien or whatever. You know, having the figure here in the form of an action figure. It's got that um, reference as a, in the 3D. And I, as you can see, a lot of the stuff is predominantly inside the packaging because I like to keep that thrill of what you have when you're at the store and you see it for the first time by keeping it in the package. And there's always like that sense of temptation. Here we are, we're an artist now. Um, you've studied it, you went uh, to, to FIT. And I know you and I, we bumped into each other in a comic, in a comic con in New York City. And we both kind of were chasing after our careers at that time. Um, can you give us a little bit of a background as to the beginning of the career and the difficulties or the simplicities, the things that you overcame that would help people be like, you know, especially nowadays when there's young artists trying to get into the art field Give us a description of what it was like for you. All right. Um, well, I did um, four years at FIT. I got my BA in fine arts. And after graduating from that, I um, was fortunate enough to get a job at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as, a, as one of the guards, you know, keeping an eye out on, for the artwork while people walk through. So you can imagine after graduating from college, having studied art history for four years, and then you're placed in the mecca of all art history. I was like in heaven, being up so close to the artwork, I was able to study it, look at it with a lot of detail, after hours and whatnot. So a lot of inspiration came from that. During that time as well, I started uh, networking with uh, a lot of co-work, I mean, co-artists, peers, and I joined the group that back then was called Soul Concepts, and we were an art collective sort of like the Andy Warhol factory, and we would hold exhibits and uh, charitable, charitable events. Also, uh, we had private commissions and things like that. So, began to learn the business aspect of, you know, creating art more along the lines of the fine art genre. And then later on, more exposure to other artists. And as Carlos mentioned, the, um, the Comic Cons, I started seeing more of that world, uh, of the sci-fi fantasy and started tapping into that. By then I had a rudimentary uh, portfolio that I was showing around and every year I go to these things to just to try to see what doors can open and you know, see what can be, be had. Okay, so <clears throat> once you started getting into your career, 
once you started doing paintings, uh, book covers, uh, comic book work, um, you also got into graphic design. Uh, was there a reason for that? Oh, yeah. Like, like any kid getting out of art school, you'll soon learn that you can't make a living nine to five painting. Um, the, the, the golden age of illustration, as it's called, is long gone. So to keep my head above water, I had to pretty much pick up another skill, which was computer graphics. Now we're talking about, you know, I went to FIT from 88 to 92, and the computer graphics design, Photoshop, was just starting to make its way into the market. So it was part of my curriculum. So upon graduation, I took it upon myself by asking friends and pretty much just clicking on the mouse and seeing what happens to learn the different software and applications. And that's where I saw potential for Steady 9 to 5, creatively doing design work on the computer. And that's how I started down that path, pretty much out of the need because I wanted to do everything I could not to go flipping burgers all day. So, you know, took it upon myself to learn computer graphics. And that's what I currently do today. Now, in between all of this, computer graphics, illustration, loving movies, loving collecting action figures, at some point in time, both you and I um, got into working in film. Yeah, we were going to skip all that, but nah, I remember because we did it. So, so we worked on, on a few projects together, but we won't dwell into that. Um, movies and music videos and all that type of stuff, where did that come from? Because that wasn't from, from school. We didn't, we didn't study that. Um, and uh, I, know how, I, I know I stumbled onto it, and I, I had my path that kind of just happened to fall into my place. Where did it come from for you? I can uh, clearly remember um, through the Andy Warhol factory that we had, which was Coastal Concepts, I ended up meeting a great independent film director called Nestor Miranda, and he found out that I knew how to draw. He put me on as the storyboard artist, and I was just in heaven because I get a kick out of seeing all the behind the scenes and the making of when it came to film. So that's one skill that I tried to practice, pretty much interpreting the written word a la storyboards. And he put me on. And it was his first movie, Destination Unknown. And I really felt like I directed myself because we would chat about the script and call out the different ways that the scenes could be laid out. And I would doodle them. And he would be like, great, that looks cool. Or change this, change that. And we storyboarded the whole script. And that's what you know brought me into that world. And then from there... One of the actors in that movie went ahead and did his own movie, and he put me on this time as art director. So I was in charge of a whole department, and it was, you know, a great thrill. Um, and then little by little, just saw the doors like that, networking and whatnot. Then came about music videos, other individuals who had, like, whether it's, like, you know, commercial projects or independent film projects, and that's pretty much how I got into that world. Now, another one, uh, another thing you did uh, during that time that I think some of the fans would recognize, and I don't think we have it here now, but, but if you do, we'll pop up with it, is an album cover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeru. <Jeru-ru. laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit about that one. All right. Uh, that would be interesting. I mean, I don't know if we could break for a second for me to find the painting, but... Um, I, once again, as, as, as a collective, we hooked up with a renowned photographer in the hip hop, currently in the hip hop music video, independent film market named Daniel Hastings. Now, Daniel Hastings way back then was also making his way up and coming, trying to make a mark in, in the photography world. And he always wanted to be an innovator. So one of the things he came up with was the idea to do an illustration for the backdrop of the character, Jeru, the damager, the rapper, um, as a background, and then Photoshopping the figure onto that background. And it was all up to me as to what that should be. And I came up with something pretty, I don't know, I'll just call it eerie, because what it is is 
it's the New York City background based based on one of the lyrics of Jeru the Damager. It went about saying that his lyrics were so strong they could knock down buildings like the World Trade Center. So I took that quote and I made this illustration where I showed like one of the towers crumbling, Statue of Liberty in the river, and the city pretty much in ruins, you know, based on the lyrics and based on that track that he was singing. And little did we know, X number of years later, it really happened. And I don't know what to call it, but it was just eerie. And that's that album cover that's got like the symbolism in it, which who would have known? And that's what you're referring to. Yeah, so um, I, like these, these are questions off the cuff. And of course, I do know Hugo, so uh, I didn't prepare to, to bring it out of that piece, which I, I probably should have. But um, again, we'll, we'll try, hopefully maybe towards the end, um, I'll show like a trailer of the project you we're talking about, and maybe it'll give you a chance to pick that up. Um, okay, so all these different career paths, all coming from art, and, and you and I have both experienced all this, and we've been, we've been I think, I'd say we've been fortunate to be able to tap into these different fields in art. Um, and you paint in oil, uh, as, I, as do I. Um, as an artist, as a person, when you first started painting, or going from crayons or chalk or whatever to painting, what, what do you feel were the technical difficulties for you? You know, everybody has like a mental block at some point in time, and then, you know, you kind of overcome it. So for me, it went from drawing comic book style art to like, let's say, photorealism or whatever. What, what was it for you? Like, what was your big, like, fear first, and then you overcame it, and now you're able to successfully accomplish it over and over again? Um, well, I remember that my first medium and the medium that I really got passionate about were watercolors. Watercolors allowed for me to render gradients and transitions of one color to the other um, with a controlled and semi-slow process. Acrylic paint dries up so fast because of the way I paint. It's just something I can control and, and create rich skin images. So when I looked at oils and I saw that a lot of the people that I admired painting oils, I felt that it wouldn't be so bad because the drying process is a lot longer. And that to me was a big advantage. The challenges come, came with regards to the mixing of mediums and knowing how to combine these things so that the colors can be rich, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I, I, I can't say it was that difficult. Definitely a lot more comfortable than uh, acrylic. So, you know, it, it took a while, but I, I enjoyed the process of, of taming it, if you call it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's now fast forward. Um, now, you and I have also worked on some business together. Uh, we pursued doing websites. We pursued, you know, we're doing, we're doing the whole biography here <laughs> of all the things that you pursued. Um, and... And that was fun only because, if I remember correctly, we went to lots of multi-million dollar parties. If you remember all that, the, the, basically when the internet started, um, one of the things that we got deep into was uh, participating in not only the web design aspects of things, uh, you know, album covers, sorts of things, but the web had no e-commerce, had no Google, had no Facebook. You know, we were delving in the beginnings of what the internet was delving into. And we went to all these big parties, and a lot of them were like amazing parties, but none of them had a business strategy to make money. Do you have any like particular memories of all of that in terms of like the excitement and then like, oh wow, you know, each one of those failed. Uh, any, any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I guess what you're trying to highlight is we definitely got caught up on that wave of the, the dot-com boom, as it's, you know, historically called. And we saw opportunities because we're such curious individuals that we were drawn to that arena because within us there's this entrepreneurial side. So that ambition 
um, had us exploring that, 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 that world. And because, like Carlos had mentioned, it was all in its infancy, uh, no one knew what to do, how to do it, etc. So, you know, there we went, trial and error, all oh, this work, that didn't work. Let's check this out, let's check that out. And, you know, with everything, there were some hits, some misses, but we felt pretty good because as that, you know, young entrepreneurial generation, we, we went for it. Um, but, you know, as you can see, we're not interviewing at one of our mansions. We obviously didn't get that far, but uh, we learned a lot, especially about business and how to conceive and, and set forward business plans and goals and stuff like that. So taking that experience like all of other life, we filter it now towards our art and towards, you know, everything else that we do. So it, th those were the benefits that came out of that. Yeah, I mean, um, those were interesting times because it wasn't so much that we were, well, we were watching the hits and misses. We were watching as uh, millionaire investors were putting money towards uh, magazines and, and all sorts of different businesses. Uh, I remember Music Match, um, and it's Microsoft projects, and all this money was being poured in, but nobody had a battle plan as to how to make the money come back. And uh, that was the beginnings of the internet. I just thought it was exciting times. And you know, it should be mentioned because that is part of the history that we've gone through. Uh, in, 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 but, but I think what I'm also trying to point out is how flexible being an artist allows us to be. You know, from, from you know, we're just learning traditional oil and traditional pencils and all that type of stuff. And it allowed us to touch base, it allowed you to touch base with the film industry, with the graphic design industry, with um, the internet industry, and then it keeps moving and moving and going on. And, and we watched the whole growth um, of everything that's occurred uh, right, right before our eyes, and being able to be have, have touched it in, in, so, in, in any way is part of the excitement that we call life. Now we're fast forwarding to now. Let's, let's touch base with the project. <laughs> okay, so I've been tiptoeing around it. So for the past couple of years, you've been working on a specific product. Um, and it involves uh, a bunch of artists, and it involves a lot of what has inspired you in your life. And hopefully, the product will inspire others. But I don't want to speak to you. I want you to explain now <laughs> what the product is and what it's about and, and what made you come up with the idea. All right, um, pretty much what Carlos is referring to is I'm um, getting ready to publish my first book. It's an artist collective uh, book, sort of like what's currently out in the market uh, called Spectrum or Infected by Art. Um, these are big leaders in the industry of showcasing high quality sci-fi and fantasy artwork. Um, every time I look through these books, which are published once a year, I would admire and be in awe of all the different art that I saw in it. As an artist, I would draw aggression from these images. But also as an artist, I'd have my questions as to how did they do it? What did they use? Uh, photo reference, any uh, animatics, uh, play models. How did the artist go about doing these great masterworks? So one day I said to myself, what if there was a book that provided you that visual, that information um, of how the creative process was done for those particular images? And that's when it hit me. Like, why not do it so that you'll have it? And in doing so, be able to share it with the rest of the world. So out of that, I guess you could say wish, I came up with my first book called Vision Illustrated. Now, as Carlos was saying, Vision Illustrated is an artist collective, an, an art annual which showcases art from many different artists. And each artist gets a two-page spread showing one completed image and on the other side showing the process of how they did it, strictly through images. I always emphasize to people that this is not a how-to book. It doesn't come with instructions. You're not going to learn how to go about it, but you get an insight as to how it was done. You interpret the images as you will, but the information's there. And what makes my book different 
than these other annuals that I mentioned is that I show you how the artwork was done. I believe there's an audience out there, fan base as well as artist base, that would appreciate a book like this. And that's the project you know, we were highlighting. And it's about to come out you know, this fall. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right, so we're gonna be, you're going to be doing a Kickstarter project, which is going to launch the book. And um, hopefully uh, you'll find all the supporters. You'll be able to influence and also uh, enlighten excitement to new and up-and-coming artists. Uh, so I'm going to show a little trailer right now as to what that, a little bit of the visuals that will be in the book. And uh, that's giving you a glimpse as to some of the books, uh, some of the artists that you'll see, and uh, some of the images that you'll see. So I'm going to have Hugo kind of show you a little bit more of the book and tell you a little bit more about it. All right. Well, here's a, I guess you could say, like a proof print sample of what the books will look like. It's not that thick for the first book, but it's rich in its content. And like I was saying, you know, many of the artists will get a two-page spread where they'll go ahead and show how the artwork was done and share with you their creative process. Now, Biography information and links to each of the artists' websites can be found at my website, visionillustrated.com, as well as inside the book. Each artist gets their contact reference in there, um, information about the artwork, what they used to paint it, and it's all traditional art. Uh, maybe one or two pieces are digital, but the majority is traditional art. So look forward to that. As Carlos mentioned, we're going to be you know, announcing the Kickstarter pretty soon. Um, we'll make a lot of noise about that, so be the first to pick up your copy, stay connected with us, and, and be that, be the first. Very cool. Um, the project is awesome in respect that it shows you all the steps from the pencil art to the final illustration, and um, it, it gives you an idea of what the process that an artist goes through, especially if you're not an illustrator. Uh, it just knocks that curiosity in respect to that process. So you go from pencil to some of the photo references and to the final artwork. And now this is your, your, your basically your big first publishing puppy of your own. Um, and, and now you're able to say that you're a publisher of your own books. Yes, as Carlos mentioned, um, as creatives, as artists, we, we have this curiosity as well as this drive to constantly be exploring and, and seeing 
what can be done, and now venturing into publishing. Um, Vision Illustrated will be an annual publication. It's going to grow with regards to its content. Right now, there's painters in there with sci-fi and fantasy. I plan on opening it up to comic book illustrators, sculptors, digital artists. Well, they'll all be in there sharing their creative process for you to check out, as well as all their contact information, because this book is about the artists, promoting the artists, and seeing you know what can be done for them as a community. Um, a lot of great artists believe in giving back. Now, I'm not saying I'm great, but I do see an opportunity to give back, and here I am doing that with Vision Illustrated. So, once again, keep an eye out for it, because it's, it's going to be big. Now, one of the other, other things that I find fascinating about the book is the timing of the book. So, in the world that we've just discussed, everything we just described, we've watched the entire market of everything change. So, an example, when we worked on the music industry, um, there were still cassette tapes and CDs, and then now everything's digital. Um, in the world of um, movie making, you know, we, we worked with the big ARRI cameras and all that type of stuff, and now it's, it's iPhones. <laughs> you know, as we're shooting some feature films on iPhones, obviously not all, all of them, but it went from film to digital. Um, and now also in illustration, we're finding that we're going from these traditional artists, which is one of the big reasons I like to see this book, uh, because we're, we're honoring the guys who are still very traditional. And not to say that the new artists um, are, are not talented. Obviously, they are. And even I'm playing with digital in respect to digital art. But to be able to, to see the last few generations who might just be the ones uh, doing the final pencil drawing, um, you know, charcoal and, and oil and acrylic, and coming up with these amazing fantasy arts uh, pieces. That, that to me is the fascinating part about this book. So um, I really hope that you guys uh, go to the website and uh, sign up to, to get notifications about it. Uh, it will be launching a Kickstarter, hopefully in the next uh, couple of days. Um, and uh, oh, one more thing. I, also, I also have a Facebook page facebook.com vision illustrated to keep up with the latest happenings and i'm constantly posting information about what the artists are up to you know the latest projects and stuff like that so once again it's about the artist promoting the artist so make sure to visit that as well facebook.com vision illustrated oh, we're also instagram <laughs> okay so um <clears throat> so this is where we're now uh, towards the end of the interview and um, I guess one of the last things I want to ask you is, so you've done all this. You've accomplished a lot of goals. Um, you've done a lot of things that a lot of artists haven't tapped into. And, and that's very honorable for one, but also that's just cool to see. What's next? What do you think is your next tackle? I know you're going to publish more, but is there anything else that you'd say in your, in your head, in your heart? Um, man, I want to be able to do this. Is there anything that's like that? Well, I mean, to be quite honest, I'm so caught up right now with, you know, producing the book, getting ready to put it out to market, the Kickstarter and all. It's, you know, quite an endeavor. I've been at it for like about a year and a half, probably going on two years now. And I think for now, I'm just going to see about making sure that this thing accomplishes its goal, which is to, to, to be published, to be able to have people find it out there and and enjoy its content um going from that while as an artist i constantly see myself challenging myself to improving my art skills as a traditional painter and hopefully look forward to like bigger and better projects um I, i've been learning a lot that one can't wait for the door to knock to see who can give you that particular commercial project you should challenge yourself to produce your own um, artwork, whether it's personal artwork that you hang or, or some kind of like product or something, t-shirts, you know, hats, whatever. And here I am going down the path of uh, publishing. So I pretty much have just hopes that this, you know, succeeds as I believe it will. And on the side, continue to challenge myself creatively and then hopefully this will open other doors that I don't even see coming forward. 
and make life even that much more thrilling. Cool. All right, guys. So now we go into the part of the show where we can, I'll see if there's any questions that you guys may have.